a good time. Put a smile on your face, yeah. Keep me caring. Elation Radio. Mm-hmm. Even brighten your day and help you through the night. Bring you good music. Keep me caring. Elation Radio. And here's your host. to the Just For You podcast with Pastor Michelle Y. Wright on Elation Radio. We're so grateful to be here with you on today. Listen, every week is a blessing to make it to the next week. We want to begin today thanking the Lord for life, for health, 
for strength, but also we want to be in mindfulness of those that have lost their lives through the recent shootings in Michigan. I want you to know our God is a compassionate God. He sees all. He knows all, and he loves us, and I want us to be mindful there is always room for change, all right? So I want you to come in focus, grab your pens, grab your paper, grab your tablets, phones, whatever you use to study, we'd love for you to journey with us. I send a shout out to our very own producer and visionary of Elation Radio, and that's none other than Dr. Kimmy Robinson, we love you and our Elation family. We send a shout out to each and every one of you, the listeners, whether this is your first time or if you've listened from week to week, we appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to be with us. I send a shout out out to my husband, Pastor Donald Wright Jr., one of our biggest supporters, amen. We say thank God for him. And our guest of the evening, our special guest, Charlotte White. But, hey, none of this to be done with the Holy Spirit who is gracious, who is kind, who makes all things possible. We invite the Lord into this podcast, and we ask him to have his divine will and way. I want to share with you what the Just For You podcast is truly all about. If this is your first time listening in, please take a listen because we want to share this information with you. The Just For You podcast is designed to encourage, empower, and engage listeners to thrive spiritually and naturally, utilizing biblical principles. Just for you will reveal truth in the Holy Bible to illustrate kingdom living, soul winning, compassion, and strategies to serve mankind, making a difference locally and globally. Just for you will allow listeners to hear teachings that are applicable, guests that will inspire, and opportunities for serving more effectively in the home, church, school, community, and marketplace. That is what Just For You is all about. Before we begin, we want to acknowledge our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are excited excited to be back another week, and we want to give him the glory for all things being done. Will you take a moment to pray with me? He is worthy to be praised. Amen. Abba Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you thanking you and praising you for all things, for doing what you do best, for loving us for keeping us, for helping us, for strengthening us, for comforting us. Whatever is needed, you have supplied. And for that, we say thank you. We thank you for this podcast. We thank you for Elation Radio. We thank you for our special guest. We thank you for all that you're doing in our lives, in our marriages, in our homes, in our families. Listen, someone may have a complaint, but God, we just come to say thank you for everything. Thank you for being our healer, our deliverer, and our savior. For those that don't know you, we ask on today that you touch a heart. Touch a mind, touch a spirit to get to know you a little bit better. I pray, Lord, that this word delivered will give strength. It will give to those that need it most. And that our special guest will inspire 
those that are listening in, to be overcomers as she is. And we give you all the glory in advance. We ask that you forgive us of our sins and we forgive others that we may be forgiven. Father, you are majestic. You are marvelous. You are better than anything we've ever known. You have been so good to us, and we just want to let you know we love you and adore you on today. Now have your divine will and way in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, listen, I thank you for Praying with me, listen, nothing can be done without the Lord. I keep saying it over and over and over and over again, but it's so often in this natural world. If you're not connected to God, you might think you do it all, but it is only by his grace, only by his mercy, only by his goodness that we have life and have it more abundantly. This exhortation today will grab a hold of our hearts and give us wisdom on directions we must take. There is something about falling in love with Jesus. There is something about standing on the word of God. It is Something since we just experienced Love Day on yesterday that we find ourselves in love with the Lord. And I tell you, it makes all the difference in the world. Today we're going to be studying from Acts 9, and we're going to be talking about the importance of the Lord leading in God's way. Today's topic is. There's a change in my heart. Today's topic is there's a change in my heart. Let's talk about it. We're in the book of Acts 9, and we're going to read as such. I'm reading from the King James Version. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus. To the synagogues, I need you to pay attention to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, who art thou, Lord? Ain't that funny? And he said, who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the prick. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Let us stop there. Let's go back to the beginning. His name is Saul of Tarsus. Listen, he was on an assignment to kill off, to set up, to do what he could do, to hurt and to harm those that were on their way to the message. Listen, he was specifically after those in the synagogue. I want you to think about that right now, because we've seen where churches have had shootings, Uh, and Bible studies. We've seen these things come to pass. I need you to understand there is nothing new under the sun. I need you to understand that our God is a gracious, a powerful, and an all-knowing God. There have been a lot of Saul's of Tarsus in our communities, in our lives, but here's what I need you to understand. The same God that saw the incident the same God that saw the tragedy, the same God that's in control knows exactly what he's doing. Seven, 
and the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice but seeing no man. Hallelujah. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, somebody say, when his eyes were opened, he saw no man, but they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And there he was three days without sight, neither did he eat nor drink. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street, which is called straight. You hear people talk about straight street. This is where it's referring to. And inquired in the house of Judah for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayed and hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hands on him that he might receive, go back, we have Saul of Tarsus persecuting the Christians, those going to the synagogue. He's trying to cause them to be bound. He's threatening them. He's doing all this manner of evil against them. But yet he has an experience with the living God that he's blinded for three days, that he understands in these three days Something is wrong. The power he thought he had in the earth was diminished immediately at the presence of the Lord. I need you to know today whatever you're facing that seems like it's threatening you, that seems like it's turning you inside out, that at the presence of the Lord it will cease. And because he is God, he works it out. I know you're saying, but bad things continue to happen. I know you're saying, this isn't true. Something happens. Look at what just happened in Michigan. But can I tell you, in the midst of all of this that is happening, God will come through. He will comfort those families. He will bring enlightenment to what happened. He will bring enlightenment to the family of the one that committed the crime. I need you to know he's a just God. He's a favorable God, and he knows what he's doing if we will pray. Saul had enough when he came into the presence of the Lord, to humble himself, to hear, and to follow through. He prayed, received instructions. Let me go back. He prayed and received instructions. Those instructions led him to Ananias. Now, I just want to ask, who is your Ananias? Who is going to come in the midst of your derailment, of your not understanding, and lay hands on you and free you when your eyes get open? Somebody needs to hear me today. Your eyes have to be open to hear what it is and see what it is that God has for you. And it cannot be open in your own strength. Then Ananias answered, I have heard by many of this man. Come on. Let me back up because after he prayed, he said he had seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he has done to thy saints in Jerusalem. And here, he hath authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. Hold up, wait a minute. But the Lord said unto him, go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and the kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house 
my Lord, entered into the house and putting his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, has sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately fell from his eyes as it had been scaled, and he received sight for which and arose and was baptized. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples, which were at Damascus. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogue, that he is the Son of Man. But all that heard him were amazed and said, Is not this he that destroyed them which called on the name, on this name in Jerusalem, and came thither for that intent that he might bring them bound unto the chief priest? But Saul increased the more, listen to this, in strength and confounded, hallelujah, the Jews which dwelt, the ones that dwelt at Damascus proving that this is very Christ. And after that, many days were fulfilled. The Jews took counsel to kill him, but their laying awake was known of Saul, that they watched the gates day and night to kill him. Then the disciples took him by night and led him down by the wall in a basket. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, He essayed to join himself to the disciples, but they were afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. I want you to know, let me stop right here. Let me share this with you. Let me help you today. There was a change in his heart. I don't know what you're facing today. I don't know what has been your story. I just know that when we are on a road that seems like we can do it all by ourselves, we can find the Lord will send somebody. Why? Because he loves us. Why? Because he's concerned about us. Inside every man, boy, and girl, There is, and woman, there is a vision. There's a purpose. But to carry it out, we must stay connected to him, to hear from him, to see what it is. He won't let me say it again. We must stay connected to him, to hear and see what it is he wants us to do. If you're doing things and you're building and you're growing, you must hear from the Lord. The blindness was a representation of the division between him and God. It was dark. How do we know that? Because God is light. So if he was darkened in his sight that he could not see, the light, which is the Lord, had to come. But God uses, oh, my Lord, people like you, like me, to help someone else to see what it is he wants to do. Listen, are you an Ananias? Are you the one sent on assignment to bring light to someone's darkened situation? Are you the one called to use your gift to open doors, to make the captives free, to be able to help someone see the Lord Jesus and not you? Are you the one called to allow your his grace to cover you and give you direction that you don't make a mistake. How do we make mistakes when our thinking becomes solely what it needs to be for us and not with his plan in mind? The Bible clearly lets us know to allow ourselves to give him our plan. He gives it to us in giftings. We give it back to him for guidance. He gives us the giftings. We give our plans back to him for guidance. When we follow suit as believers that this is his perfect will and plan, there's always a plan 
Let me say it again. There's always a plan and an outcome of victory. I don't want to live an average life. What do you mean, Pastor Michelle? I want God to always walk with me, to lead me, to guide me, that I can hear and I can see. Whenever I can't hear and I can't see, I am still. I will wait because no matter how long it takes, I don't want to be out of order with him. So therefore, when he speaks, I follow just like Ananias. And Ananias, with his thinking, knew that this man had a past. Listen, God is calling us to know that one loved one, that one person that you think will not never get saved could be the very one God will use and impact this entire world. And you may feel I've been in church all my life. This is why we have to subject ourselves to hear from him. This is why we must not be so in a hurry to believe someone can't be saved. God can save who he wants to at any given moment. When tragedies occur, when problems happen, when things seem like they're never going to get better, there is always hope. It may not turn out the way you think it should. It may not feel like the way you think it should. I guarantee you those believers were on their way to Damascus just because they already knew they were headed in the right direction. Listen, here's the lesson. When you're headed in the right direction, on the straight street, you can find peace. You can find joy. You can find love. You can find assurance in this word of God. When you get off of straight street, you can find trouble. You can find a lot of things. Or as a believer, trouble can find you. But can I encourage you today? Think of it this way. Romans 8 and 28. I know it sounds crazy. I promise you it's the truth. And we know all things, not some of the things. I want you to go over in your life. I want you to think about all things that have happened in your life. The Bible says it works together for good to those who love him and are called according to his purpose. I want to assure you today, some things have to happen. The ministry you have, I need you to understand, is birthed out of your pain. If all of us could just get up and shout and never have a problem, what a life that would be. But can I just drop this nugget on you? Nine times out of ten, the greater the mission, the greater the assignment, the more you will go through. Why? Because he knows he can trust you when he places you where he needs you to be. Let me say that again. The higher the call, the more impact you're to make, the more you will go through. Look at Dr. Martin Luther King. His vision was not about him. The assignment was not about him. The assignment assignment was to impact. And believe me, I'm sure when he received that word from the Lord, he could see himself doing it. He already knew it would cost him. And at a certain point, when you're real close to God, it even told him it would cost him his life. Here's the question. Why would he continue to do it? Because he was close enough to God to know whether he live or whether he die, he belongs to the Lord. I need to ask you, in whatever you call to do, in your belief and your faith in the Lord, when you're called and when you accept the calling, are you willing what you have to go through to impact people you may never 
ever have seen or will see because of the gifting that's on the inside of you. If your answer is yes, then you are seated for what he's calling you to do. And be careful of looking at others, thinking they're not going to do the will of God. Neither will they rise to become what they need to be. Because it's usually in that turnover field that God is working, that he's teaching. Oh, my God. There are people in prison right now that God's going to release, and they're going to impact this nation. Why? Because they have an assignment and they have a call. And they were never seen to be the one to carry out the work. You don't know who God is going to use. Be grateful for whatever the assignment is that he loved you enough to give to you. Follow it with love. Follow it with grace. Follow it with integrity. And follow it with a servant heart to sincerely, with compassion, want to serve somebody else. And I promise you, he will come through And he will show himself greatly in your work, your ministry, whatever it is he's assigned for you to do. As long as you give him the right to come in and do what he must do. Remember, you didn't create yourself. He knows exactly what he created you to do. He knew exactly with the tragedies that have happened in this world, how it would rise the people to pray, to support families, to love on them in the time of crisis, to be able to help them heal through pure love, not just a camera out. Y'all better hear me today. Not just I need to pop up on the scene to get myself out. No, sir, no, ma'am. You must move just like Jesus did. The fanfare came because they recognized the anointing. It wasn't because he was trying to make himself known. I close on that today. Whenever he opens the door to rise you up, you must remain humble that he gets all the glory. Because when you allow yourself to take the glory, that's all you're going to get. But we're living for far more, for generations beyond us, to know the God that we know, to serve the God that we serve, and to make the impact necessary that no credit and glory goes to us for what he did. Now, I'm not saying you don't celebrate, because we should when we do great things, as long as we're not putting ourselves In his shoes. There's a difference. Except that you're called to serve. And he'll always trust you. To be at the top. Because you know why you're serving. And who you're called to serve. I pray this week's exhortation has been a blessing. And a help to you. That we keep ourselves mindful. That we were created to worship. We were created to serve. We were created to live a life that someone can look at us that may not even know his name and want to be drawn to him in all we're doing. Whether I'm at a business table, whether I can sit with the president, it won't change my character of who I am called to be because of what I do for the kingdom. But instead, They will understand my God, the one I serve by the way I carry myself in his name. All right? That's every believer's prayer to be used by God and that he get the glory. So I thank you for listening in to this week's exhortation. We find that the word of God is true and it's not acceptable to some and not to another. We all have choices, and the way we choose and the way we connect with him, he allows us to live that which he's spoken through our lives, okay? 
There are many people that have prayed for you before you got where you are. There's a many people that called out your name when you didn't have a faith. So we thank God for those who have ears to hear and eyes to see. Well, listen, I'm excited about this week's teaching. All of you that know me know that I love to serve, and I love connecting with people who choose to serve others with the light that they have and the gifts that they've been given. On this week, we have a very special guest by the name of Sharla White. Sharla is an author and an entrepreneur, and she's going to be sharing with us her story and sharing with us what the Lord has had her up to. And we want to introduce to some and present to others none other than Sharla White, an empowered woman of this time. God bless you on today. Hallelujah. We're waiting on her to get on. I just want to continue to encourage you, and um, they'll let me know when she's ready. But I'm excited about what God is doing and how um, he'll do what he has to do. It's just a great thing to trust him and to allow him to do what he has to do in each and every one of our lives. He's amazing. He's gracious. He's kind. And we're thankful for that. Amen. Sharla, are you with us? She says she's on. So let's bring her on in. Hello. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, my sister. How are you? I am wonderful. How are you doing? I am so grateful uh, that you are on. We're thankful you can spend this time with us. We're so grateful. So listen, Charlotte, we've been talking about a little bit about healing. We talked about there's a change in my life. I want you to share with the listening audience, for those that don't know you, tell us who is Charlotte White and talk to us. I know you're an author and an entrepreneur. Yes. Um, Foremost, I am the king of a daughter, and I am grateful and I am blessed to have my husband. Uh, We'll be Mm -hmm. 14 years. Saturday. Um, I have, I've had six children. Mm -hmm. Um, I have two bonus children and a grandson. Um, Mm -hmm. And I am just me. I'm just Charla. I am a loving person. We'll give a shirt off of my back. Um, I, I just and I love meeting new people and I love networking. My mm-hmm. story has been difficult, but nothing that I cannot handle because I've mm-hmm. always had God on my side, even when I was not having a relationship with Him. He has always been there. He has never left my side. So let's talk about that. Let's start right there because you said something that's part. For one, so you're saying to me, and I need the listening audience to hear this because it's very key to what you're going to talk about, about who you are now and what you're doing. So when you were saved, explain to us what you mean when you say he was always with you. How did you know the Lord was always with you? Because I've always felt him, but I've always ran. Once, mm. once once it gets hold to you, I don't care how you try to run. I don't care how you try to act like you don't feel it. He's there, and he's going to make sure that mm. he, he's going to make sure you know that he's there, regardless of if you want to know it or not. Mm-hmm. That, mm-hmm. that, 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 you that know, is, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say for you. Uh-huh. You go, you go. I was um, I was saying he's going to make sure that he knows. 
he's going to make sure that you know and you understand, basically, that he is God. You you can't play God. You can't be God. You you can't mm-hmm. do not even a snitch of what he does. Mm-mm. I'm so excited. I'm trying to calm myself down, Charlotte. You just started something because the bottom line that you're talking about is what I was saying. There are people in process. You understand what I'm saying? They're not quite there yet, but they hear the voice of God, like you heard the voice of God, and you knew he was with you. And since that time, talk to us about the change in your heart. Tell us your story. What happened that caused you to be the woman that you are today from that time of hearing his voice when you were running to where you are now? So it started uh, started when I was little, not even little. I can't even say that. It started when I was in, like, my pre-adolescence, and I was molested. Mm -hmm. And... Everything from there just went downhill, but I was always mm. at the top because mm. it just seems like even no matter what I had went through, I felt like I was always on top of the world, and I was mm. still mm-hmm. able to be humble and still love on the people that did me wrong. It didn't stop mm. me from being Charlotte. Mm. And mm. it, it just progressed. It's like it prepared me for my adulthood. And I, I was just smooth sailing. You know, everything was just, like I said, I didn't have that true relationship with him. I just, mm-hmm. I was living life just as life was. You know, it just, it, it just was what it was. Until 2000. Until 2012. First, it started with Mm. my mother in 2011. I lost my mother to breast cancer. Mm. 2012, I lost my eight-month-old son. Mm. And that was when my eyes opened. Because Mm. I had never in my life thought I would be the one to experience losing a child. Wow. And the way it all happened, I met my husband when he lost his child. That's how me and my husband met. And hmm. so I had never thought in a million years, I never knew what he was going through until it happened again with the both hmm. of them. And I couldn't figure it out for the life of me. And all I can do the day after it happened was sit outside. And all I heard was the birds in the car, in the engine of the cars on the outer road. I was just in the midst of nature. Mm. But I was so at peace. I was way more peaceful than what people would have been at at, at Mm -hmm. that some point of their life. Like, I knew I've always been that type of person. I always knew that once death hits, that's it. Mm-hmm. There's nothing that I can do about it. There is no way that I can act to bring my son back. I could do mm-hmm. nothing but be peaceful and trust that God knows exactly what he is doing. Because I do not know. My husband did not know. Nobody knows what somebody's life looks like ahead of their head before. Nobody knows what it looks like. He could t- he could have took him because he knew what was going to happen down the line. I didn't know mm-hmm. that. So I had to trust him that he was doing what was right for our son. Mm-hmm. That is how I got paid that. Mm-hmm. Now, wow. again, after losing our son, um, 12, three years later, remind you when I lost, when we lost our son, DFS came into the picture because they thought I did something mm-hmm. to my baby. Mm-hmm. But when the autopsy report came back, 
there was I did nothing wrong. Mm-hmm. So they had took my two oldest babies. They were mm-hmm. gone for thirty days. Mm-hmm. Two thousand fifteen. My daughter, my only daughter. I've had six children. I've had mm-hmm. five boys and one girl. My daughter ended up with a knot, probably like the size of the bottom of a soda can on her head. And we could not explain mm. to them what happened to her. She was four weeks old. Mm. They took our children from us for 18 months. Jesus. Mm. 18 months. Mm. They tried to say that either me or my husband did something to her. Mm. We're talking about four weeks old. Mm. I never gave up. I'm not going to sit here and say that it was easy because it wasn't. Mm. I'm not going to share the code at all. It was not easy at mm. all. When I tell you that enemy, that enemy was coming for us, each and every mm. way possible, they was trying to get me and my husband to tongue on each other. Like we did. Mm-hmm. My God. And I knew mm-hmm. I had to cooperate. Them people kept asking me, did I want a lawyer? Did I want a lawyer? I said, my lawyer is God. I don't need a lawyer. He going to mm-hmm. because he knows what happened. He knows that mm-hmm. he didn't do anything. This goes all mm-hmm. the way back to trusting him. You have to trust him, no matter how Medicine. hard it is. Mm. Because it's hard. It's hard mm-hmm. even trying to figure out whether we're going to see our kids or not. It's hard mm-hmm. to know who our kids are with. Yes. Mm. But we have to give him that. And when we don't give him that, it does no good for us. Mm-hmm. I quit nursing, Pam, and my husband was ready to retire me anyway. I quit nursing at the beginning of the pandemic in March of 2020, and we started mm-hmm. our our renovation business. Mm-hmm. One, as soon as the pandemic started, I quit. Wow. I had no, I had no money lined up. I said, Lord, either we gonna sink or we gonna swim. I can sit on this my, 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 my. and tell you story after story about how much I have had to put my trust in him. Mm-hmm. And it's not easy. Mm-hmm. But you have to say but every some, single thing he can you through. have to stay praise. You have to stay praise. My, 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 my. Point for you. Mm. Mm-hmm. Right How did all, all of this? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Mm. Mm-hmm. Writing the mm-hmm. book, it was hard because I had to sit there and I had to relive everything that I had my been through. Mama. Times that I couldn't even sit in the room by myself as I was typing my story. I would sit there with my back turned to my kids and my husband, and the whole time I'm typing, I'm crying. Mm. Because I knew I had to get this out, because I know it's somebody else out here going through the same thing that I have went through, and they have have no idea in how to deal with it. You deal with it by putting your trust in God and by getting on your knees. You aren't even going to get on your knees. Go sit in a room, in a quiet room somewhere, and just manifest and just be quiet and listen to what he is saying. If he don't say it in that room, he's going to put something in front of you or he's going to send somebody your way to tell you exactly what you need to know. It ain't nobody going to know it. But you and that person that you're talking to, because it's going to send chills through your body, especially if you know you ain't opened up your mouth to a soul. Uh-huh. 
You have to consistently renew your mind, and you have to trust daily. You have to. There's no if, ands, and buts about it. You have to re- you have to re- renew your mind. That's why you get up early in the morning before you start doing anything, and you get in that Bible. You turn on your mm-hmm. God. You do whatever you have to do to renew your mind for whatever is going to come for that day. You don't renew. Hmm. Now, talk to us. What is the name of the book? Are you finished with the book? Talk to us about it. Those that are listening in after hearing your testimony and listening to you may want to connect with you for your book. And you also have an upcoming event coming up that we want to share with the listening audience as well. Talk to us. You sat down. You wrote the book. What is the title? Have you finished the book as of yet? Yes, the book is finished. It was published April of 2021 through Purpose. Um, and so it's been out. It's been published and everything. Um, the Give book, us the title one more time, Charlotte. What's the title again? The book is Love is My Weapon. Mm-hmm. Love is um, My Weapon and we- where would they be able to get your book? They can find my book at www.charlottewhite.com. Um, mm-hmm. And my book is also at walmart.com and Amazon. Amen. Amen. So we have three outlets we can find the book, and her name is spelled S. H-A-R-L-A, and last name is White, W-H-I-T-E.com. Look her up. Make sure you connect with her for her book. And also, you have a speaking engagement coming up. Would you like to share with us where it is and when they can get a hold of being able to see you in person? Speaking engagement is Life After the Abuse. It will be held at the Catering to You Banquet Center. That will be on Saturday, March the 18th from Mm -hmm. 9 a.m. to 12. There will be blessings served at 9.15. The price of the tickets are $25. Um, And basically at this event, it's going to be me and three other amazing ladies speaking Mm -hmm. about this physical, emotional, and even spiritual abuse. We've all had some type of abuse in our lives. So if you can make it, get your ticket. It's $25. We will be serving breakfast. You don't want to miss this event because we are healing some people that morning. Amen. Amen. You know, I'm super excited to have you on. I'm thankful that you shared your testimony. There might be someone listening that has been facing some of the same things you've gone through. But what I love about the Lord, when he gives us exhortations about things, not knowing we've not had this conversation about your life, I love the way he ties it all in. When Saul was Saul of Tarsus before, He gave his life to the Lord. He understood there was a mission. He was humble. You said you need to go into a room and you need to listen to God. That's exactly what happened to Saul. That's exactly what happens to believers. They yield themselves to the King of kings and the Lord of lords because it should never be our will but his will being done. Then in order for him to change, he had to have an Ananias. So there were people that came in your life that spoke life into you, that you would become this woman of God that you are, a husband, he said, you know, that you would experience life in fullness. And then after that, if that wasn't enough, he allowed you to use your pain. Love is my weapon to be able to allow someone else to see that they can make it out too. 
You began by telling us you were molested, and that meant that you went through some pain. It's right there that most people give up, but he strengthened you for the journey. We're so honored to have you on today. We're thankful for your testimony, and we look forward to hearing more about your journey in the Lord, what he's done, and what he's able to do in the lives of others that hear your story. Listen, you've just heard from Charlotte White. You can reach her at www.sharla white w h i t e dot com you can find her books by contacting her there you can get them at walmart listen i'm expecting great things from her i'm trusting god to continue to bless her business which i need to talk to her about she's awesome i'm thankful that god is doing great and amazing things in our life. Before I let you go, Charlotte, would you like to leave a, a quick verse or uh, ending nugget to remind the people how to stay close to God as they continue on their journey in life? The one, the one, the one scripture that I always find in my book. Is Jeremiah twenty nine and eleven for I know I for I know the plan. Yes. Yes. The plans that he has for us of a future yes. and a hope of good and not evil. Amen. What a beautiful closing scripture. I thank you again for being on the Just For You podcast with Pastor Michelle Y. right on Elation Radio. We'll look forward to speaking back with you soon. May God continue to bless you and your family in your journey of love, ministry, and success. I thank you so much for having me. God bless you. Well, listen, you just heard from Charlotte White. We're giving you the information to directly contact her for her book, for speaking engagements. Perhaps something resonated with you that you'd like to reach out with her and talk to her about her coming to your establishment to speak. Please, by my, by all means, contact her at her address, www.charlottewhite.com. God bless you. Listen, I want to share that there are some announcements coming up for us on Just For You. I want to say if this is your birthday month, the month of February, most of us have experienced Love Day on yesterday. We'll talk a little bit this month about why we call it Love Day versus Valentine's Day. And listen, that was awesome to have woken up. Whether you had a valentine, a loved one, whatever you choose to call it or not, I want you to know you are loved. Perhaps it was your birthday. For all the February birthdays, we want to say happy birthday. We celebrate you on today. Also, not only her birthdays, maybe you got married, had a baby, bought a home, maybe created your own business, whatever it is that God has it in you to do, and you fulfilled it and done it, we celebrate you on today. Sometimes it's been a very rough road, maybe it's hard through sickness or death. We've had families this week that have passed away, uh, and we want you to know we are praying for you, the Buckner family. I'm not sure of the other young lady's name. I believe it is Smith, but another family that has lost the family of Michigan, uh, those that we know, those in Turkey. We want you to know that we are praying. Perhaps it wasn't your family's name that was called, but you've experienced some hardship. You've experienced some pain. We want you to know here, and just for you, we are praying for you. Also, we want to also let you know that needs are everywhere. We want to encourage you if you have a need, don't become prideful. Don't let people feel as if there's nothing that can be done. Take everything to the Lord and wait on his instructions, and I promise you 
He will have a resource. He will have a way for things to be done for you in your life. We'd like to inform you about United Way. We in St. Louis Dow 211, they will be able to refer you to a resource, whether it's for food, housing, clothing, whatever you need, you can reach out to them for resources and they will be able to direct you and whatever you need. We also have Urban League St. Louis. You can reach them at ulstl.com in the St. Louis area. There are over 55 programs connected to Urban League that will meet your needs. Please, for more information, reach out to them. They are there. They are known in our St. Louis area for their food drives, various programming that they offer to the community. Please reach out to them. I want to talk to you also about the St. Louis County Library. Many do not know, but they offer flow kits. These are women's personal items that are needed through the monthly time that if you are low and maybe there's an emergency that happened while you were out, you need some assistance. You can reach out to the SLCL dot find the nearest branch near you to see whether or not they have those things in stock so that you will be able to receive that. They also have diapers for babies that are available for young children. You can reach the slcl.org for more information. Let us keep in mind this is Black History Month. In Black History Month, we learn so very much about where we came from, who we are, and what we are called to do, and what we've seen others do to make it a little easier for us. Now, let's not be misconstrued. We're still working through a lot of things in our country to make this land a better land for all. But may I say to you, let us never forget those that came before us that opened doors, that we stand on their shoulders for what they've done to make it better for our culture and for our lives. I want to also share with you, there are senior resources also at St. Louis County Library. Hey, did you know that if you're confined and you are near an assisted living situation, they have where they will be able to provide transportation or arrange for your library needs to be met. For more information, call them or look them up at slcl.org. I want to share two closing announcements. Sweetheart Pancake Breakfast. This is going to be Saturday, February 18th, 2023. It's going to be from 8.30 until 10.30, and this will be at the Berkeley Civic Center. The address is 6120 Madison in Berkeley, Missouri. The cost? I know you're waiting on it. It's free. Come out and please uh, have breakfast and talk about your concerns for the community. Enjoy great food and take the chance on door prizes. This is being presented by the council and the women of the ward with Willie Mae Anthony. She's presenting this for her ward. So please come out and meet her and meet her team and those council that will be available in the city of Berkeley, Missouri. In the midst of all of that, we want you to be prepared. There are so many things that are going on. I want you to know these announcements are not the only announcements, but we want you to understand if you have announcements, please send them to me at Michelle right on Facebook. You can inbox them to me. I'll read your announcements so that we can let the community know what you are doing. It's very important to do that. And that way people can come and support you as well. We like to support events that um, brighten our community, help our community, give us more strength. Again, this is Black History Month, but this should be support year-round. 
I try to make sure that any announcements we receive, we can share them with the community. Our last announcement is from our Alderman Yolanda Yancey. She will be having a Women in History Experience. And this will be on Wednesday, February 22nd, 2023, from 4.30 until 6.30, all right? And this will be held in the Hawthorne Auditorium. It's at 1901 North Kings Highway Boulevard. For more information, you can contact her. She's got some great guests here quite a few to name, but we want to make sure that you come out and experience this with the children, uh, with the youth. She'll have youth. Uh, We'll have, uh, I believe it is Senator Carla May is one of their uh, guests that they will have. I know it's being presented in part with Monica Butler. And for more information, please contact Alderman Yolanda Yolanda, we call her Yo-Yo, uh, Yancey, and she'll be more happy to give you the information. Please look them up. Again, this will be Wednesday, February 22nd, 2023, 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. in the Hartborn Auditorium at 1901 North Kings Highway Boulevard, okay? Very important. I want you to know these announcements and part with this alderman as well as those that are presenting. Please come out and support. It's important to see support at your events. I want to thank you for listening today to the Just For You podcast with Pastor Michelle Y. Wright. We love you. We appreciate you. We thank you again for taking notes on our exhortation, for listening to our special guest, Charlotte White today, didn't she have a phenomenal story of overcoming? I want you to know there is nothing too hard for God. Wherever you are in your life, if you don't know him as your Lord and Savior, it certainly isn't too late. Please get to know him while you have time. He's gracious, he's good, he's magnificent, and he's able to do anything but fail. I thank you so much for listening again to the Just For You podcast with Pastor Michelle Y. Wright. We're going to pray out. And again, if you'd like to contact me, oh, I have other announcements. Sorry. I want to also let you know on Mondays, you can find Pastor Michelle Y. Wright and Pastor Donald White Jr. on Facebook at 830 for Kingdom Wisdom Weekly. We will meet you there at 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. On Wednesdays, meet us back here on Elation Radio with Dr. Kenny Robinson. You can meet us here at 5.30 p.m. for the Just For You podcast with Pastor Michelle Y. Wright. Hey, if you haven't heard, the ladies are back of elation. We will have our clubhouse event, which will be held Friday of the month. Our speaker this month is Pastor Rhonda Bello. You do not want to miss it. A phenomenal businesswoman, gracious woman of God. We're so excited that she'll be with us on that evening. Uh, she travels quite a bit across the country and especially out of Uh, across the world. So we're very excited for her being with us on this uh, Friday. That will be February 24th, the last Friday of the month. Please join us at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, I want you to be prepared that we can pray together, pray for our week, pray for our families, pray for those that we love, and even our enemies that God may be glorified, all right? We'll be giving you more announcements coming up. Please don't forget to send those in. If you'd like to email me, you can email me at www.leadingrights, like my last name, W-R-I-G-H-T, at uh, gmail.com. Also, we want to keep you informed if you missed this entire podcast. You can listen to it on replay at YouTube, various 
digital platforms, please look us up at Elation Radio. You'll find other podcasts there as well. We want to thank you again for listening. Abba Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you so much for being with us, leading us, guiding us, and directing us, giving us what we need on today, and allowing us to be what someone else needs on today. We ask that you save, heal, and deliver, that you cover every word spoken, that you protect us, bless our special guest, Charlotte White, and also bless our visionary and producer, Dr. Kimmy Robinson. Bless my home, God, as well as the listeners. Continue to keep us strong, healthy, and wise, and we will thank you forevermore. We even pray for our enemies, oh God, those that try to use us, misuse us. You said to bless those that curse you. Uh, Bless them and to listen for them, and that's exactly what we're doing. We pray for Michigan, those in need, those that have heartbroken uh, issues going on, whatever the case may be, that you hear and you answer the cries of your people and to forgive us of our sins. Don't let us walk in this world thinking we don't need to be forgiven. Keep us humble, and then, God, give us hearts to forgive others, and we will thank you forevermore in the mighty name of Jesus. Hear unspoken requests as well. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you again for listening to the Just For You podcast. This has been Pastor Michelle Y. Wright. We'll see you next time if the Lord says the same. God bless you. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord.